Brian, you really dressed up for the occasion today, I see. No, no, no. I, I'm in my rustic mode, right? As we talk about the West, driving West, the Sierra West, as it were. As we talk about a game all about exploring and... It's kind of like the much more Euro version of Western Legends, really. So, what is Sierra West? It is a console game. So the question of the day is, what is your favorite console game? Now, what do you mean by console game? Well, when I say this, I mean, I don't mean it's like literally Contra or Chrono Trigger or something like that, and you played it on your console and you're playing a version of it today. I mean, it's a system that has modules, and the modules are very different enough to where they... Yes, they use the same mechanics. You're still using a Super Nintendo controller, but they do different things with the process and with the things that they now. We're not talking about it as an extreme of a console, such as maybe, I don't know, a Time Stories or something, but that's why I'm asking. Let me know in the comments below what your favorite game that is more of a console and uses different cartridges to launch into this game. To see, uh, Sierra West, interesting game. All about, you know, exploring. There's four different modules. One is about apples. You're harvesting apples. Another one is called Boats and Banjos. It's all about music and uh, dueling. There's banjo duels, which is pretty awesome. And getting fish. There's a, a mine, a mining one, gold, gamblers and gold or something like that. And then outlaws. Uh, so you've got these four different aspects of the Old West in a very uh, much um, Euro game. What's interesting, we've seen Nevada West and Sierra Sorry, Nevada City and Sierra West, Nevada City and Sierra West come out recently, and we have these much more Euro games in a Western style. I've been asking for this, I've been clamoring for this, no one probably listened to me, but if they did, great, thank you. But let's take a look at what Sierra West is, how it plays in the basic module, we'll talk about kind of how it's used in other modules, and we'll go from there. So this is the main board of Sierra West. No matter which module you're playing, some of these cards are gonna be a little bit different, but you'll build the mountain nonetheless, and it'll tell you how to do it based on the player count and based on the three, uh, the four different modules you're playing. So it's kind of interesting that you have these different various ways to play that are not exactly the same. The majority is of what you do, but your goals and things like that are totally different based on the game. So what you're gonna do is make sure that you have everything with the Apple symbol for this version. This is the uh, Apple Hill version. I think it's called Apple Hill. But the first module in which you're going yeah apple hill and so you're going to take all of your cards in your player color the one specifically for this module you're going to put at the bottom of your deck but you're going to shuffle the rest of them up they're going to have the uh, basic ones for always that you're always going to have in the game and then you'll have the apple hill one right here that will go at the bottom so shuffle your normal ones put the apple hill one on the bottom and then draw three cards now this is a action planning action selection sort of game in based on this personal player board down here and you've got a couple of different type of workers first of all you've got your wagon which is going to go out here on the pioneer board you've got another one who is going to be climbing the mountain up there but you also have these two workers down here which are going to go to the different spaces that you're allowed to have here the different cabins the tracker and the trapper board as well as the cards that you're going to choose so you notice they have different colors here and here so from your three cards, you're going to choose the actions based in a certain setup. And that setup looks like this. You're going to tuck in just like this for your cards. And that's the picture you're going to make. You're going to tuck these down into the sleeve. So you'll do it. Uh, one goes here. This one goes behind a little bit higher up there to match up with that green. And this one goes down in front just like this. So now you have a green path all the way across, a tan path all the way across here. And then you have the summit up top. Now these all contain actions that you're going to get to do on your turn. The first, if you had a cabin down here, you'd be able to take one of these cabin actions. We don't, but you notice there's two different types of workers. The top one is for this guy's path here. And the bottom one, the tan path, is for this meeple. And the whole point of this is you're going to now go along these spaces and collect everything that you get there. Some of them are shovels, which do things like move and dig up places up here. Some of them are boots, which allow you to move on the big board. The shovels allow you to either excavate that place or allow you to build a cabin down here. Any of the other ones, the resource cubes, you're just gonna take those resources. So this would be two food, uh, this would be a shovel, this would be uh, the, the stone. The walking, like I said, allows you to do one of two things. You can either walk up the mountain over there or you can move your wagon train ahead on the track by moving it and paying the the uh, resource there so this is a boot and a single resource to get here when you're here you're along the trail and anything under your wagon and to the left of it 
you will be able to use and there will be more of these tree cards that come out later but that's specific to this module you'll collect all those resources when you get to the end of the two tracks here you can take a summit action when the summit actions are all listed and explained but they're essentially going to be spend these resources to move up on these tracks the tracks are really the main crux to get points in the game especially this module there are the normal three tracks that are always there be food uh, wood and stone but this one adds apples now apples are a shared resource between the two, the, all the players so you're going to gain apples on the board together and you're going to spin them individually so I, ideally what's going to happen is somebody could somebody could gain a bunch of apples in the very next turn you come over and spin them and move up the track to get points for them but at the end of the game you're going to score points based on that track you can then also trap an animal so if you see these animals that are available here these are the ones that when I go up here and take a summit action, the other player on their board can move the tracker or trapper to one of these places here. They'll flip over that animal, so it's a rabbit. I can flip my rabbit over. I now have access to this. So when you take the fur trader action, which you'll see on some of the cards, you can get the food associated with this. Now that's not spending, that's not flipping, that's just you now have access to it. And you'll notice that animals are negative three points if they're not flipped and spaces on here for not having the cabins are also negative three points if you haven't flipped them. When you go up to the top here and take the shovel, so let's say I want this card and I use the shovel action, I'll take that card, anything under it will be unflipped uh, that's not completely covered, kind of like Seven Wonders Duel. And then basically the mountain, once it's empty, once it's fully discovered, that's one of the end game triggers. Uh, and then whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins the game. That's how you play the Apple Hill module. The other ones involve um, boats and, and banjos. You're gonna be going down here and getting fish. The other one is about mining, and the other one's about outlaws. So they're all three, four different things that have to do with the West, but they all use the same core mechanic. But what really changes is that uh, kind of the bottom theme down there, with it, whether it be boats and fish that you're trying to get, whether it be gold that you're trying to get from the mines, or whether it be trying to shoot outlaws and you'll get bullet tokens, etc. So a lot of really cool opportunities and a lot of really cool things uh, to do in Sierra West. So that's Sierra West. I love several things about this game. First of all, we always start with presentation. You know this. Number one, as a console game, I like the way that the four different modules work and continue to work using the same system. Enough said about that. Number two, presentation and look and street uh street uh, what do you call that street <laughs> street appeal street uh, house appeal, whatever it is the the look when you walk by and see this on the table and you see that mountain and you go wait a minute those are made up of individual cards but it looks like one solid mountain and in fact those are spaces on the back of those where your little person can go with the coonskin hat like that nice touch also not only is the mountain a single picture made up of multiple cards, but so are your actual panorama, your, your block of three cards at the top. I think that's a really cool idea. Now, that looks good. It looks good on the table. It looks great. Even though it's, you know, wooden pieces, granted, they're, they're different. They look a little different. They look nicer. Uh, wooden pieces with, with basic cards and a flat board, it's still really nice. And I love, love, love the system of the forked player board where you have to choose three cards, which brings us more into mechanics. But what I love about and I'm going to deem it, I'm, I'm marketing right here, this term, it is a micro engine building game. Now, what do I mean by that? Every single turn, you're building an engine for that turn. Now, you think, well, that seems hectic and unuseful. But no, trust me, much like a tiny little drone that you fly, zzz, this is a micro engine where you're picking these three cards. And not only are you picking the cards, you're picking the combination of where to put the cards, front, back, left, right. Or not front back but i guess left right center and you're choosing which ones to put left right center and you have to decide okay well if i do this combination i'll get plenty of goods that i can use at the end of the turn for the summit actions but if i do this i'll be able to get possibly two different um uh, shovel actions and use them uh, but if I do this I'll get some really good resources that I can use for next round so each round is its own engine and each round pays off at the end when you do those summit actions so you have to think through every single thing and the good news is um, it doesn't and it might list us in the instructions but the way we play is you plan your turn on other people's turn no one cares what anyone else is doing except for those animals in the tracker action tracker and trapper and so it really doesn't matter. You can go ahead and set up your turn and other people can go. So all in all, Sierra West is a win. I really like the way this is thought out. I like the fact that it's four different games somewhat in one. I love the way it looks on the table. 
I love the use of the forked player board to get those three cards and make each turn feel so important of an engine. Uh, definitely go check out Sierra West. Really well done. Really fun game. Just a cool engine ability game that involves a nice payoff every single round. So, can't say enough good things. I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Instagram, etc. at Dice Tower Brian. And until next time, we'll see you.